Welcome back to our tutorial on spring integration. Hello again everybody, my name is Jim White with Intertech. And this is the second part of an eight-part series on spring integration. In our first tutorial, we learned that spring integration is a messaging architecture, one with channels and endpoints. Endpoints are either producing or consuming messages that are sent through the channel. Also in our last tutorial, we learned about message channels in more detail. We learned that there are two general classifications of message channels in Spring Integration. There are pullable channels. Pullable channels buffer messages. While there may be many consumers for a channel, in a pullable channel, only one consumer is going to receive any message in the channel. And consumers have to actively pull that channel to receive messages. Then there are subscribable channels. Subscribable channels deliver their messages to all subscribers, no matter how many subscribers are on the channel. However, subscribable channels don't buffer their messages. And we learned in an EIP diagram, the message channel is represented by the icon you see at the bottom of the slide. We also learned about endpoints, message endpoints in Spring Integration in our first tutorial. And I mentioned that there were several different types of message endpoints. In the tutorials going forward, we're going to look more deeply at these message endpoints. And in particular today, in this tutorial, we're going to look at adapters. Adapters connect your channel to external systems or web services, or as we'll see, a great number of technologies and applications. Channel adapters or adapters are the endpoint in Spring Integration that connects a channel to an external system. I particularly like the definition provided by Pro Spring Integration, an A-Press book on adapters. They say that adapters provide the bridge between the Spring Integration framework and any external system or service that we may want to bring together. They provide, in a Spring-like fashion, a separation of concerns. That is, they help to separate the messaging API from what is the transport and protocol used in our Spring Integration system. You don't want your code to have to know a lot about JMS or JDBC. The Spring Integration adapters help provide for those capabilities. Now adapters are classified as either inbound or outbound adapters. Obviously, inbound adapters bring messages into the Spring Integration channels, while outbound adapters get those messages out of the Spring Integration channels and into outside applications, databases, etc. Now adapters are represented by the EIP icons you see at the bottom of the screen in diagrams. With a couple of different EIP icons now at our disposal, we'll start to see how those come together in a diagram at the end of this particular presentation. So what kinds of external systems and services do Spring Integration adapters bridge? Well, the answer is a lot of different types. At least out of the box, Spring Integration comes with a number of built-in adapters. And you, of course, can build your own custom adapter where you find that the adapters provided by Spring Integration don't meet your needs. In particular, in your last lab, you saw a couple of adapters. You saw a standard input and output stream adapter provided by Spring helping to get text from the standard input into our message channel and then also take text from one of our messages in a channel and get it into the console view, which is our standard output. In addition, Spring Integration comes with file adapters to get message information in and out of the file system, JMS adapters to get messages in and out of a JMS queue, JDBC and or JPA adapters to help get messages in and out of a relational database. FTP adapters, either secured or unsecured, to help drag messages in and out of an FTP system. We've got feed adapters, mail adapters, UDP adapters, Twitter adapters. Again, a whole series of what are essentially bridges from our spring integration channels to the outside world, to external services and or applications. Now typically we'll also find that the use of adapter will require us to bring in an additional Spring Integration module. 
many of the adapters are housed in these additional modules, as we'll see. So let's take a look at an example adapter. In particular, let's take a look at a JMS inbound adapter. Now, a JMS inbound adapter is about getting messages from a message queue via JMS under the covers into a spring integration channel. Again, remember, adapters are all about bridging external systems and services to our spring integration channels. Now, a JMS inbound adapter is going to require a JMS connection factory and a JMS queue. That configuration is something that is not displayed here in our tutorial. JMS channel adapters are part of Spring Integration's JMS module. Again, as I mentioned, usually when you have a need for an inbound or outbound adapter, you're going to need another one of Spring Integration's modules. As we take a look at this example, you'll also notice that a JMS inbound adapter requires a pull of the messages into the channel via what's called a polar. And that polar has to be provided a pull rate. In other words, how often should this adapter pull or pull messages into one of our channels? In the example shown here, the pull rate is 3,000 milliseconds, or 3 seconds. And here's an example of a JMS outbound adapter. A JMS outbound adapter takes messages from a message channel. In this example, taking a message from the same My Message channel as the inbound adapter put a message into, and delivers it to a message queue. Again, via JMS underneath the covers. Note that the configuration of this JMS outbound adapter again requires the addition of a JMS queue, which is not covered by this tutorial. So again, adapters in Spring Integration are either inbound or outbound. In this case, we're seeing an inbound and an outbound JMS adapter. Adapters again are covered by the icons you see at the bottom of the screen with the inbound JMS adapter and outbound JMS adapter icons. And with an understanding of those two icons along with a message channel icon, we get to see a full EIP diagram that shows the delivery of messages between endpoints and through various spring integration message channels. Obviously these diagrams can become much more rich and complex as we start to address further endpoints and connect them all with various message channels. With that, you're ready to tackle lab number two. In this second lab, you're going to get a chance to work with a spring integration file adapter. In fact, two different file adapters, an inbound and an outbound file adapter. You'll also learn how to add a Spring Integration module to your Eclipse project, again using Maven and a POM file as our mechanism to bring those modules into our environment. And you'll get a chance to see how to use those module components, in the case of file adapters, in your Spring Integration XML configuration with the addition of namespaces in that configuration file. Good luck with Lab 2! and. Join us again as we'll start to tackle more endpoints going forward in this spring integration tutorial.